air. We breathe it. Air is all around us, but we can't see it. So how do we know it's there? Air, it turns out, is made up of the small particles called atoms, just like all other matter. Since it's a gas, the atoms are very far apart. But we can still see the effects of this matter through scientific experiments. Let's do some tests. Because we know that air is matter, we know that it takes up space. You can see that when you inflate something or feel the wind rushing by. Did you know that air is always pressing down on us? It turns out that there's so much atmosphere up there that we can always feel about 15 pounds per square inch pressing down. However, everything that we know is a stable environment with the same amount of pressure inside and outside. We can create an extraordinary, unstable environment right here at home. For this experiment, get together an empty aluminum soda can, a large bowl, a way to handle hot objects such as oven mitts or kitchen tongs, a stove, and some very cold water. I added some ice to the cold tap water just a few minutes ago, so we know that it's at about the freezing point of water, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. Be sure to be careful when you use the stove. To begin this experiment, add approximately one tablespoon of water to your aluminum can and set it on the stove to allow the water to boil. You need to let the entire can heat up and have the water boil for about half a minute. Then quickly take the can and submerge it upside down into the bowl of water. Let's have at it. Okay, so what happened here? First we heated the can, allowing the water to boil. This created water vapor, and a little bit of liquid becomes a whole lot of gas. The water vapor puts most of the original air out of the can through the hole at the top. When we dunked it, the vapors condensed, returning to a liquid state and resulting in a lower pressure. This made a small vacuum inside the can. There was not enough time for the water to come in at the bottom which would have balanced the pressures inside and outside the can. So now we saw 15 pounds per inch come crushing down on it. This pressure, you might expect, would get pretty heavy on you or me. But it turns out that our bodies have adapted to this pressure so we don't notice it anymore. We instead feel relative changes in the environment, such as the wind. We've seen an example of negative pressure, where there's not enough air inside something. But I'd like to end on a positive note. What happens when there's too much air? For this experiment, you need a large bottle such as a 2 liter soda bottle or a milk container, a small paper bowl that will fit inside the bottle, and a hair dryer. For this second experiment, attempt to roll the ball into the bottle by using air. as it looks. That's because when we aim the dryer at the ball, it's also aimed at the mouth of the bottle. This means that the hair dryer is forcing air into the bottle, compressing what was already in there, and making even less room inside. By now, there's not space for anything else. Not even a little ball. Air. It'll blow you away.